Welcome back to the Blue Door Pop Thunderdome for another Boo with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87 Best Daily Podcast, a show about everything and absolutely nothing at all. Coming right at your ass five days a week. Happy Thursday out there. Sitting shotgun with me is going to be a Marie, stand-up comedian uh, based out of New York, huge Vikings fan as well. We're, we're, we're friends uh, on Twitter.com, and we'll ask her all about uh, the comedy scene, uh, what her journey was, and why she became a Vikings fan. Tell a friend, spread the word, iTunes, Stitcher, Ahar Radio, and our friend Soda Stick Co. coming up this Saturday, June 10th. They're going to be at the St. Paul Summer Beer Fest, and it's dedicated to craft brews. The Outdoor Craft Beer Festival features unlimited sampling of 100-plus breweries and a commemorative, commemorative tasting glass. You got food, you got music, you got education, you got everything going on. Soda Stick Co. is going to be out there slanging their wares. Awesome, awesome stuff. Ooh, they're taking pre-orders for their Touch Em All hats. They got multiple styles. Check it out, sodastickco.com. And, hey, if you order online, so check out at the uh, St. Paul Beer Fest. Yeah. Uh, use promo code PURPLEFTW for free U.S. shipping. Hit it up. All right, let's get into a little Amory. And coming on in uh, for the first time is uh, I-, I like the stage name, the A Amory. A Amory, the A Amory. Yeah, because um, a lot of Marie's in the world. Th- there's a lot of A's. I mean, hell, I'm an A, and you're differentiating yourself. You're like uh, Sh- Cher or Chappelle. Well, people get really confused by my name, but I just kind of shortened up my full name. That's mm. how I got it. Oh, well. Hey, Marie. Hey, hey Marie. Yeah, I yeah, got about the pots on. Eh. These New Yorkers love it, you know. Yeah. Hey, Marie. All right, so let's get into the journey. Oh, follow her on Twitter at part, uh, part underscore part time, time bro. underscore bro. I, you had too many underscores. You got to clean up the Twitter handle. Well, that's all they'll, they'll let me use. <laughs> Uh, stand-up comedian, also loves sports. Uh, she's hilarious. Uh, definitely check her out. Ooh, Sports for Us, uh, which we'll get into. And also, huge Vikings fan. Yeah. Um, uh, more than a fan, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Uh, why don't you hit me up with the elevator speech of Sports for Us real quick, and then we'll talk about you. You want to talk about my Sports for Us? Hell yeah. All right, cool. So about three years ago, I was sitting watching ESPN and no – disrespect ESPN, but I was like, God, I'm so sick of this programming. It used to be funny. You know, like Sports Center. I decided there used to be a lot more entertainment in ESPN, in my opinion. And since I do stand-up comedy, I'm a sports fanatic. I started writing a sports blog, and I was like, man, I'd really like to combine stand-up comedy and sports. And then roast became popular, you know what I mean? Like the, mm-hmm. You know, like they do the celebrity roast on Comedy Central and stuff. Yep. I was like, oh, my God, it would be amazing as a sports fan because I perform with so many talented roasters and comedians, if comedians roast each other's sports teams. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to start off with the NFL because I love the NFL. And three years ago, I had my first one where I booked 32 comics. Oh. And they represented each and they re, they rep each NFL team. And you start off in your division, just like regular football. And then you worked up till um, we had a Super Bowl. It was really cool. So mm-hmm. then I was like, oh, I want to run with this idea. And so I started doing other sports. I did March Madness in March, and I did I did NBA this past Sunday, and they're starting to really take off. So I'm like super excited. Now, are all the representatives actual fans of the of the teams, or are they just sort of adopt yes. who's available? That well, that was hard because yeah. like this is the funny part. So I'm based out of New York City, and I was like, oh, I'll probably get the Giants first, or anyone in the NFC yeah. East. And <laughs> the first person who like. Uh, who um, auditioned for it were like the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm like, that was the last team <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd have to find. <laughs> you yeah, know? probably not a lot so, of Texans fans run around Midtown Manhattan. Yeah, so what what happened was most of all, most of them are representing their own teams, especially in New York. It's such a diverse place, a melting pot, so there's people from all over. So that was a blessing. But I, but if I couldn't, I couldn't find like the Texans. Mm-hmm. Um, I couldn't find a couple teams, so I comics were willing to step up to the play and represent them just because they were like sports fans and wanted to be a part of it. So 
it's awesome. And it's crazy, though, because this past, the, my first year, the Chicago Bears won. Mm-hmm. And now my second year that's doing it, the Miami Dolphins won, too. Wow. It's crazy. Yeah, isn't that yeah. random? Now, you obviously made it to the Final Four and then just petered out in very tragic fashion because that, that that's the life <laughs> of a Vikings fan, right? <laughs> well, actually, I host them, so I'm like the ref. Uh, so I'm the MC oh, for the whole show. You're, you're Mackay and Pfeiffer every- in 8 Mile. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so that was exactly who I am. Yeah. And what was hard was, like, no one wanted to rep the Vikings because mm-hmm. they knew, like, how hardcore I am. Yep. And then I was really mad because the Viking one sucked. Oh, well, that's of course, a shame. we lost the Packers. It's fine. Oh, that's even worse. Yeah. I know. It, come on. Y- 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 your weave is slightly more believable than Mackay Pfeiffer's, though. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah no problem. <laughs> I, 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 I'm all about the 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 genuine compliments on here. Uh, so the you're originally from New Mexico. Now, when I, I said New Mexico, yeah, yeah. Uh, now, when I was first uh, stalking you on the Twitter dot com, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you're Vi- one of my Twitter boyfriends. Yeah, yeah, Viking. Oh, one, one. There's multiple. Well, there's, you got to have you got to you got to have you know. Yeah. Posing different URLs, you know what I mean? That's yeah, fine. that's fair. I understand that. Uh, so knew that you were a Vikings fan, but it says New Me- uh, uh, your your location says currently NYC, always NM. Now I thought that was my dyslexia playing tricks on me. It's like, oh, she's got to be from Minnesota, right? I mean, how Minnesota, how do you yeah. how, how do you get a Vikings fan out in New Mexico? All they do is meth how up do there. You choose to suffer your whole life. Yeah. <laughs> and my mom, what a joke! We, you know, we're a diehard sports family. And we're in the worst state possible with no professional sports teams. We had we had like a a hockey team like for briefly for a moment, but not professional. And then we have the farm team. Um, we had the farm team for the Dodgers. Now with the Rockies, we have the Isotopes, the mm-hmm. Albuquerque Isotopes. Um, but what happened was my mom is in the military, and we she grew up in New Mexico, but then she I actually was born in North Dakota, and my father. And my mom, my mom's from Montana. My dad's from Minnesota. So Mm -hmm. my roots are from my dad's side of Minnesota. Ah. But my mom just became a diehard Minnesota Viking fan in the 80s. And then she told me when I was a little kid, I was just like obsessed with sports. She's like, you don't have to like the Vikings. You don't want to. And then I also like was obsessed with Chris Carter. So I just Mm -hmm. like decided to join the suffrage and become a Minnesota Viking fan at the age of five. Now, suffrage and Th- th- that means something completely different than what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, no, like well, one of my favorite uh, man show bits, as to take a tangent, is when they went around le- like a-, a farmers market and talked to all these women about ending women's suffrage, and they were getting uh, getting signatures and stuff on that. Like, like no one knew what suffrage mean meant. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. That it- is that is really funny. Yeah. Suffering. Uh, Suffering. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah. what was what's been your most heartbreaking Vikings moment so far? And I say the, so far, as in because we know what's coming. That all of my favorite Vikings of all time ret- didn't retire Viking. They left one year and went and played for the Dolphins. No. Um, okay. Um, okay. Uh, I think that NFC. Can I have a tie? Yeah, sure. <laughs> can I have a tie? Um, well, the fifteen and one season that was that was our year. So I think that was the biggest heartbreak as a child. Yep. Uh, that was a rough freaking Atlanta. I don't know if I can curse on this show. Nah, and then, and then of course the NFC Saints 2009, that was another, I think those are the two, I think those are tied though, but little more on the 15 and one season, man, that was mm. heartbreak. And that was actually the first time I saw the Vikings play live. Oh, which game did was, you like, see? like my first time I, uh, against the Arizona Cardinals. Oh, okay. I got you. In Arizona. Yeah. yeah. We won. Oh, I mean, obviously, yeah. <laughs> obviously. The, uh, I, I feel like the, the heartbreak of the 98 Vikings um, enhances 09 even more because that was supposed to be the Vikings, like, 85 bear season, yeah, where you just come out of nowhere, dominate, yeah. win a ring, and then you, you're, you're kind of good. You know, you're kind of good for at least 50 years. I mean, the – Jets won Super Bowl three, and they're still sort sort of trading off of that, which is fine. But the yeah. fact that ninety eight went down, and then oh nine was very eerily similar to ninety eight, where it's like we have this high powered offense, and here we go, and then all of a sudden here we wah, go. Wah. 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 Yeah. I mean, the 
maybe third close. I don't know. There's a couple. There's there's a couple. Hmm. Is when we that, that I mean the 26 yard field goal against the Seahawks first round of playoffs years yeah. ago. That was pretty. That was pretty shitty. I, I I'm not gonna lie. I, I I laughed my ass off at that point because. Um. Yeah. Where were you? I I, it's, I have a funny story. <laughs> Well, I was just watching at home, doing my normal thing of taking notes and getting ready for the show uh, for the post game. But I, I was mm-hmm. like, the first team to score a touchdown is going to win this game. And mm-hmm. Norv and Zimmer had three opportunities where they let Blair Walsh kick field goal. He kicked, you know, he kicked f- three freaking field goals in, in that weather, by the way. Yeah, that doesn't get talked about yeah. enough. I was like, if they yeah. would have just gone in, been aggressive, and not settled for field goals every single one of those three scoring drives. We uh, this kick wouldn't be on Blair Walsh. Now, yes, Blair Walsh should have missed it, but or should have made it. But uh, I feel like that's just a confluence of uh, yeah. Th- this is karma come back to bite you for not being aggressive, Zim. Well, you know, and what's interesting is like I couldn't watch, mm-hmm. and no one the house I was at watching it, no one made a noise. I was like, oh, we made it, yeah. and like I walked in, and everyone was like looking at me. I was like, no, he did not miss it, and they're like. Yeah, I'm like no, and then I look oh, at the screen. I'm like, oh, 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 like you, you couldn't, like you, you couldn't bring yourself to watch. Not like you, you couldn't, no, you're in, no. unable to watch. Okay, I got gotcha. you. No, not unable. I like no. couldn't watch it. I went, in, I went in the, the kitchen. I was like, I can't watch this. Uh, it's funny since uh, they're playing in the Gopher Stadium that year. Like every time I, I drive by in University Avenue, that that open end of the stadium, and just like, yeah, it was right there. Oh, I, <laughs> how do you torture? Yourself? Why do you torture yourself? Do you have to. Well, I, I feel like Minnesota sports, you know, discounting uh, or taking away the links because they're dominant, they're awesome, they're, they're ballers. But uh, all the other sports, just uh, we have the looking for the trap door, you know, looking for the banana yeah. peel so, sort of. Uh, and I, I, I don't know what it is. I feel like um, Boston sports had this before they had their decade plus of dominance. Of being spoiled. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, so may, maybe this is our turn. May, may, cause maybe, all, maybe. I mean, because all, all four of the major sports here in the Twin Cities have a little something, something going on for them. Maybe not the Wild, but whatever. Um, so this could be it. Are, are you a fan of any other Minnesota sports teams? Um, I n- not like a loyal diehard, yeah. but I mean, I just follow all sports. When I was, I like the Timberwolves right now. How young they are! So I like mm-hmm. watching them. I like they're they're a fun team to watch for me right now, but no, I'm not a fan of any other Minnesota sport. But I will support it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Uh, who are your teams in the other sports? Okay, so um, this you can tell I was like a '90s kid because when I was little, I started. Uh, I was in love with Ken Griffey Jr. Mm-hmm. Wait, and wait, wait, I hold, hold on, so, Chris Carter, Ken Griffey Jr. You just have a thing for athletes that have really creepy pencil thin mustaches. Exactly. Yeah, hey, CC it's not ha- creepy. CC had a really <laughs> disgusting mustache when he first got here, coming over from Philly. Hey, and and Michael Jordan did not have a creepy thin mustache. That's my other boo. Well, he he did afterwards. Do you remember that Hitler mustache he he rocked in the Haynes yeah. commercial? Stop reminding me. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's almost like uh, he he was he was drinking and playing cards with Charles Barkley. Was like, hey, America loves me so much, I can wear a Hitler mustache in a commercial, and no one will say anything. Yeah, he was right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. No, but I grew up so I grew up following the Mariners and then when Ken Griffey Jr. broke my heart and went to the Reds. I kinda of started just following the Yankees and now that I live in New York I kinda of follow them, but they're mm-hmm. kinda of too corporate for me. Yeah. I love baseball, it's a great game. Um I'm just like a baseball fan. I, I kinda of wherever I live I kinda of just follow the teams. I grew up a Chicago Bulls fan and now I'm just a LeBron head. Mm-hmm. So I follow him anywhere and live for that guy. And for hockey, though, when I moved to New York, I was never really into hockey growing up. And when I moved to New York City 10 years ago, I wanted to go to every sporting event. I went to a New York Rangers game, and I was like, this is a beautiful sport. So I, like, mm-hmm. started following the Rangers. Oh, uh, were you like that uh, that, that black uh, St. Louis Blues fan who just turned on mm-hmm. hockey and was like, this is mm-hmm. lit. White mm-hmm. people have been hiding this from us. I was like, what? Yeah. I was like, this is an amazing sport. Well, and it reminds me of kind of like soccer almost mm. on skates. So I was like, this is a beautiful sport. So I like really enjoy hockey now too. Yeah. it's Everyone always tells me that the in-person game is is exponentially better than the, the TV product. But yeah, who knows? Oh, yeah. have you ever been to one? Uh, yeah. You've been I, to a wild game? Yeah, I've been to a wild game. It's like, meh, all right. 
doesn't get you going. Although, I, I, I have this thing where I, I'm very jealous of people who have passion for like their sports. Like, I, I'm a fan of the Vikings. You know, built shows and stuff around them. I, I love talking about them, but you know, I, I don't live and die like. Uh, uh, when you miss the kick, like I said, that I sort of laughed my ass off. When far through the interception, I was just kind of like, meh, whatever. And when Morton Anderson for the Falcons kicked that field goal after our guy Gary Anderson missed, I was just kind of like, meh. Like, I, I don't have that ride or die highs and low mentality with sports teams no. that a lot of people do. And I, frankly, I'm a little jealous. Like, I, I wish I could take some – it's not even like apathy. It's, it's like a, just a low pulse rate. Like, I, I wish I could raise my pulse rate a little bit. I am just that way with the Vikings, though. I mm. don't. They are just like they're they're the team I'm like fanatic for. Like yeah. I'm annoying. Like that's that's how much I love them. Yeah. Like I'm up. Like I'm obsessed. Yeah, like, like most of my sports teams are like how I regard like uh, like Genoa Salami. You know, I I, I like it, but <laughs> it, it it doesn't make my life whether it's good or not, or whether I have it or not. Um, you know. Th- so I also have a podcast, Part Time Real Live, but it's off of the summer and I start up again in the fall. And I had Chris Cluey on my podcast. Did you ever see that when you were stalking me? Uh, I, I did. Did you? Did you? Did you? You did. What do you think of him? He's so great. He hates sports, but he's so great. Mm-hmm. No, him he, and Blair don't get along. Yeah, yeah. Well, well mostly because of Cluey and the prefer thing, and then Blair standing by prefer. Yeah. yeah, that whole. Yeah, kerfuffle. That whole that whole thing. Yeah, the whole yeah. We sort of forget about the the alleged gather up all the gays and put them on an island and nuke them until it glows thing. Yeah, we kind of forget about those things. But yeah, Cluey's uh, great. Uh, some of my buddies recently had him on their podcast, and he's a, a, a one man talking machine. He can talk about pretty much any subject. He's very counterculture when it comes to the former pro athlete like um he 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 loves that the game provided him with a platform and also you know a big sack of uh, nickels but other than that yeah he's got other interests in life and i respect that yeah and and i i totally keep forgetting that side note back to what we were talking about i forgot that blair walsh went to the seattle seahawks yeah (laughs) Yeah, and then, then they got they they got rid of Hauschka, so they're they're pretty much riding or dying with uh, Blair Walsh this year. <laughs> That's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> That's oh, great. All right, so speaking of the Seahawks, uh, what's your take on the Colin Kaepernick situation? Um, I, we're still talking about it. Ugh, I'm just like and over it. it. I'm just like, um, besides uh, the political standpoint, what he the kneeling and all that, I just. My opinion, he's not even. I think he's a great athlete. I don't like him as a quarterback, mm-hmm. but I think he's very athletic. And um, I, I understand that teams don't want the drama, but I also don't think. I think he should just be done, or maybe backup quarterback. I don't know, but I just do not like him as a quarterback at all. Yeah. Are you asking me what I think of him as a football player or what he's doing? I mean, just in, in general, like the the Twitter like really melts down about everything Kaepernick, and I I, I kind of feel bad oh. for Austin Davis because uh, you know the Seattle yeah. Seahawks signed him to a minimum deal, and he's like, yeah, I found employment. This is all very exciting. And then Twitter's just like, f you, Austin Davis, to f Kaepernick's you, job. Yeah. I'm just well. I'm just kind of over, it and I feel like mm. I can't believe every time I turn on Fox Sports or ESPN, where I'm like, well, why are we? Why are we still talking about Colin Kaepernick? Who mm. cares? I don't know. Uh, is it really that relevant to NFL football? I mean, well, I, I, I think know. what, what it is, that, um, you know, like you mentioned, ESPN, they've definitely gone in on the the politics side of things. Then they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're not hardcore like left, but they definitely skew left. And any way to shoehorn in a political conversation, and this combines race, this combines uh, all those other aspects that they, they want to talk about, and now it sort of gives yeah. them an out to talk about it because it's quasi-related to sports? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, like a, ooh, when uh, the, the Trump's uh, uh, Muslim ban went down, uh, I was watching the jump on... ESPN, you know, Rachel Nichols is like, well, um, there's a lot of international basketball players, so let's talk about the Muslim ban. I was like, click. Click? Yeah, yeah it's like, come on. But, I'm just over it. Yeah, I, Andy, I don't think... I'm I don't, over it. Yeah, you know, just to wrap, I don't think he's being blacklisted. I think it's 32 teams deciding, meh, eh, 
And it, well, what what is he going to do for their teams? Yeah. Like, I mean, I'm telling you, maybe like a backup quarterback, maybe. Well, I, I, I think he he's. Like, I don't know the Jets. Maybe he could be on the Jets. That sounds like a perfect fit. That sounds like Jets. a punishment, though. <laughs> I don't know if you'd want to do that. I think he's he's definitely like a top forty ish talent quarterback in, in the 40th. league. Forty, yeah. forty, yeah. And it, it's a little bit like the Tebow thing, where if you bring him in as a backup, the whole media circus will follow him, and then there will be a segment of the team and the fan base like, "Hey, why don't you start Kaepernick?" Like, like that's why he wasn't signed Seattle because they're yeah. ba- they're barely holding their ish together because. Everyone yeah. in that locker room hates Russell Wilson. Yeah. Come it's on. It's amazing. Oh, he's a new daddy. He's a daddy now. Oh, is he? Oh, yeah, because he just had sex. Again, finally. <laughs> Good for him. Yeah. You're right. <laughs> I, uh, Russell Wilson sort of uh, rose me the wrong way because I, I think he's one of the fakest athletes that we've ever seen. Yeah. Uh, people, uh, I mean, I think Seahawks fans love him, though. I don't know. Uh, Wasn't that, he a baseball player, too, or something? Yeah, and, and that's when he was on his rookie deal that he kept threatening, like, oh, he kept attending spring training with the, the Rangers, like, oh, maybe I'll go play baseball. Shut up, you're not playing baseball. Yeah. But yeah. the whole PR scrub clean thing, just uh, he, he he's a phony. Yeah, he, he really comes off yeah. as a phony. Totally. Yeah, and uh, what is he that? It doesn't uh, bother me as much as Kaepernick, though. I don't know. I'm just like whatever. Yeah, uh, who, who's your favorite player and non-Viking player in the league? Oh, that's a good. That is a good question. Hmm. Larry Fitzgerald. <laughs> Ooh, that's a bit of a cop up, but I like it. I know because he was our ball boy. He's Chris Carter, Randy Moss's ball boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when yeah. he was young. No. Um, man, that's a really tough question. I'm going to come back up. I mean, no, but I really do like Larry a lot. All right. Ooh, ooh, how about a better one? Uh, what's your backup NFL team? Because a- everyone has a backup NFL, especially as Vikings fans, because like, they could move to L.A. They could move to London at any time, like a decade ago. You know, I do like – well, this is this is like – this is silly, but I do like the Patriots. Like I do enjoy them. Uh, I know. Uh, I know. I know. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. No, hold on. I'm the uh, worst. No, wait, hold I'm on. the worst. Hey, Marie, I agree with you. They're my backup team too. I and not just because you know whatever, but like I just like I love Bill Belichick. <laughs> I love Bill Belichick, man. I like the Patriots. I like the whole team. Uh, Everyone uh, hates me for this. Now everyone's going to unfollow me on Twitter. Well, I mean, it's because you're an NYC, and he could have been coach of the Jets, and <laughs> he left and whatnot. But yeah, I, I respect I that. Know, I know. I respect the hell out of Belichick. Um, I, I think oh, I love him. I, I think Belichick does make Brady rather than the other than the other way around. But that's a bit of a hot take, I guess. And uh, you just got to respect like winning. I like Tom Brady. Yeah. I get a lot of hate for that. I like Tom Brady. <laughs> I'm gonna say it. I like Tom Brady a lot. Now, how, how much? Um, Sports do you work into your routine? Like, what's your best sports joke that you got going on right now? Um, right now, it's still killed. I talk about Caitlyn Jenner. Mm. Oh, are, um, are you allowed? Are you allowed to to say that? Well, you you are a woman, I guess. So uh, I feel like that gives you more latitude. Um, am I allowed to say it? Well, why? Well, I, I don't want to. <laughs> I wish I could. I wish I got a link for you right now. I'm gonna say. Have you seen me do stand up? Have you seen me? Uh, have you uh, watched my stand up? Uh, uh, I, I may have. In my in my stocking um, endeavors on the YouTube. Uh, <laughs> well, oh, those are old. Okay, well, this could be another plug for your show. Monday, June, this coming Monday, June twelfth, I'm releasing my first comedy special. What? And you can see a variety of my sports jokes. Do you have a link? Um, uh, I will have a link. All right, I will I, I, I'll, I'll include it, it in the show notes. Do it up. I will. I will send you a link. I just can't release it till Monday. Mm. Now, what Super platform is excited. it on? I'm doing it through um, a, just my website. Mm-hmm. Sweet. Yeah, I, I feel like... Everything's being released. Yeah, I, I love that comedians are starting to do that on their own now because back in the day, you have to go. You used to have to go through HBO or Showtime, and I, I know the Netflix specials are really huge now, but once Louis started doing it by himself, he's like, yeah. F it. F it. I don't need you guys. I I mean, I want to shop my special, of course, but I. that's why exactly Louis C.K. inspired me because 
this is just um, a part of my career, a level that I've reached, and I've wanted to do my do my first special. And I was like, I was like, oh, how should I release it? And then I remember what Louis K did. So that was exactly my inspiration to release it just through my website. So you all can get it on Monday. All right, be we'll, ready. We'll do that up. Uh, oh, stay in your lane. Uh, diving into the the stand up, uh, how did you get started? Like, what was the first inkling that you wanted to get on stage? What? Okay, I was forced. <laughs> so I was just to give a little backstory on like how I kind of evolved into a stand up comedian part time bro. Mm-hmm. Was I was being recruited for college basketball, um, and I didn't. I was kind of burnt out, and I didn't want to play college basketball. And so I I wanted to like move to LA, live the big city dream. So I moved to LA. I actually ended up going to fashion school in LA, total 360. (laughs) I know, crazy. Gave up my, gave up my ball and dreams, went to fashion school and I wanted to become a model also when I was in LA. Started doing a little modeling, nothing crazy. Mm -hmm. Started, I was like, hold on, hold on. on. Wait, are, are we talking about like, Fashion shoots, runway modeling, or are we talking about in quotes model? I did some model, runway mo- shows. I did some print. Or are we talking about um, quote unquote runway uh, modeling in LA? Model like quote unquote like I was really racist in the college student, and once in a while I do a runway show and like a little photo shoot here and there, you know. Oh, but so really uh, so we're not talking about porn. It. No. Oh damn it! All right. No way. <laughs> no, sorry. So I would have plugged that. <laughs> I probably would have been a lot more famous by now, wouldn't you think? I, I don't know. Uh, when has a sex tape ever really helped out someone's fame? That's true. <clears throat> true. Yeah. That's not my style anyways. Uh, but no, so I did some modeling. Then moved to New York. Um, wanted to really pursue modeling. And then I didn't have, I didn't really know anyone. I just kind of like moved to New York on a whim after college. I was like, I'm going to figure this out. I just knew my roommate, former roommate from college. Mm-hmm. And I was wandering around our neighborhood. And in New York City, there's like a comedy show. Have you ever been in New York? Uh, no. Okay. There's comedy shows on every corner, every bar, every restaurant, every venue. There's like 10 million stand-up comedy shows. Well, um, I was out wandering my, my new neighborhood. And I went down to this place called the Village Lantern. And they had free stand-up comedy and $2 Bud Lights. So I was like, sign me up. <laughs> and I never really was into stand-up. I just, but I, I mean, thought it was cool, but I was never really into it. Yeah. I went to that stand-up comedy show, and um, this was eight years ago. And I was like, oh, my God, it's the most amazing thing ever. Like, this is so great. So then I became friends with all the comedians. And then comedians, just with my personality, they assumed I was trying to be a comic. Because that's what you do in New York. kind of, like, hang out at the venues and the bars and the whatever. And then... Mm-hmm. Eventually, they'll start, you'll start getting stage time. So everyone assumed I was a comic. I started getting really into the comedy scene, and this one comic, Colin Kane, was like, I would, like, bring girls to the show. I would just, like, bring audiences because I just was, like, a big fan. He's like, wait, so you don't want to be a comic? You're just willing to, like, bring all these people to my show? I was like, yeah. And he's like, you should start working with me. So I started producing shows with him. Mm-hmm. And actually... I started producing shows with Colin Kane and the, at this venue, Caroline's, I started producing with him and Paul Mooney, which Paul Mooney is one of my favorite comics. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, random. And then after after two years of producing shows in New York City, this other comic by the name Sergio Chacon was like, hey, Marie, you have to start doing stand-up comedy. I was like, no, I didn't know what I would talk about. Like, I love it. He's like, no, you're going to be so good. Just do it. I was forced. And then I did it, and I caught the bug, and I just, mm-hmm. like, that's all I wanted to do. Do you remember your, your first um, first joke? Uh, yeah, I talked about my ex boyfriend being. Yeah, I talked about my ex boyfriend. Yeah. I think being gay. Yeah. Well, now was yeah. he gay coming in? No, um, I just <laughs> uh, no. I assumed he was gay because he broke up with me. Yeah. So. <laughs> I got you. No, um, that was yeah. I, I just got dumped, mm. so I was like, it was. I think my first three minutes was about him and our breakup. Now, uh, I've had a couple of uh, stand-ups on the show, and they've all got their own, like, one piece of advice to you know, someone who wants to start out. Like, like if someone came up to you in New York and was like, hey, hey, Marie, I love you, man. Uh, w- w- give me one piece of advice for trying to become a stand-up comic. Don't do it. No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, my advice Man, I, my advice, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, 
I would say produce shows. I would I would start off by producing shows because you mm. learn you kind of learn behind the scenes and you learn so much about. I'm lucky because I took a different route. I started behind the scenes and then came on stage. Most comics go the opposite way. Like like they do all these open mics mm-hmm. and like bringer shows and like whatever. I think if you produce and learn everything you can about comedy, it helps. You know what I mean? And just write every day, every yeah. day. That's the most important thing. You have to write every day. Yeah, I, every day. I feel like that's like one of the most important things in like creative endeavors, like st- uh, arts, especially <laughs> like stand up comedy, or whether it be like sports radio, whether writing, whatever. Uh, write for the trash can. Just get reps in. Mm-hmm. Just get stuff out of your head. Just get into a good rhythm. It's like working out. You got to yeah. do it every day. Yeah. You got to be persistent. You got to write every day, even if you don't want to. You have to. What have you written today? Because at first, I, at first I wouldn't do that, and now I make make myself sit down every day and write, like no matter yeah. what. Yeah, uh, it's like uh, every kid wants to come out and write the great American novel, except uh, they, they don't. They never type anything. And every comic thinks they're going to be so funny, or or if people like, <laughs> oh, I should I should be a stand up comic, or whatever. I'm like, okay, go ahead. It's just that easy. Go on stage and just go for it. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, and you're not funny the first couple of years. Yeah. You're like, because you, you don't know your voice. You got to find your thing, your niche, yeah. your whatever. And then I, I, people are amusing and entertaining. I'm not saying people aren't funny when they first start out because you could be likable. But I finally, the comic told me that when I first started. He's like, listen, you're not going to be funny for like the first five years. But I understand what he's saying now. Mm-hmm. You know? So. Well, lucky you've been yeah. uh, funny for three years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A little bit. Uh, a little it, bit. It, it sort of reminds me a um, uh, story about Chris Rock, like when he first wanted to get into stand-up comedy. And everyone always said that his brother Tony was just naturally way more funny. But Chris put in the mm-hmm. work you know, every single day, yeah. uh, writing, going to shows, working for free, just trying to get stage time. And uh, well, and then eventually got like a, a dozen Jewish writers, and now he's hilarious. Can my favorite football player – this reminds me of you. This, yeah. uh, this, this is a good, this is good segue. Wait, can I can I can my favorite NFL player be retired? Sure. Not Viking. Sure, why not? Ray Lewis. Oh, speaking of phonies. Did you just <laughs> Okay, uh, excuse me. I listen to his motivational speeches every mm-hmm. day. No, but just what you said about Chris Rock and Tony was I like what Ray Lewis says. At the end of the day, effort beats talent. Mm. So, that's something that goes along with what you just said. Oh, yeah, and that ties in perfectly cuz I just did a YouTube video today about John Randall. Uh, I love John Randall back. My in the day. second favorite Viking yeah. of all time, and you know, of all time, too small, and uh, went went to a nowhere school, and then comes in unheralded and just outworked everyone, and never took off a rep in practice or in a game because he was afraid that another John Randall was going to John Randall him, and yep. just, like you see, don't want to say it's easy to get to the top, but. Staying on top is much more difficult than getting to the top, oh, yeah. you know? Totally. Yeah. Totally. Totally, totally, totally. And, um, oh, my God, I love John Randall. That's seriously, like, mm. Chris Carr is my first favorite, and then John Randall is my second favorite of all time. I used to love hearing when he's wired. He's great. Mm. Uh, uh, speaking of wired, uh, caffeine on the weekend. Give, give me your typical, because you, you've been out doing shows in, like, the Hamptons and Atlantic City. Um, g- give me yeah, your so typical. I'm in, I'm in Atlantic City right now. I'm in Caesars, Atlantic City, back in a creepy room talking oh. to you. <laughs> hey, well, that, that's very exciting. Now, uh, Atlantic City, I, I feel like that's um, not as glitzy and glamorous as it used to be. No, and it's in a weird transition right now. Yeah. I think that they're trying to make it more of like a family resort type place, but it's like in a stuck. It's kind of stuck in a weird mm. after um what was it Sandy or whatever. It's kind of gone through a weird transition, but they're trying to rebuild a lot of the hotels and resorts, and they're bringing in like a Hard Rock Cafe. And my home, so my home club in Manhattan is called New York Comedy Club. If you're listening and you're in New York, please go there. It's amazing. They partnered up and opened a venue in Caesars down here. So that's why I have Mm. residency during the summer down here during the week. Yeah. But it's a weird town. Let me tell you something. It's like kind of like a little ratchet Vegas, like a little (laughs) more, you know. It's like Vegas before they went all in on the family end. Like Vegas, like Vegas pre-Bellagio, like in the early mid nineties. Totally. 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 And, uh, yeah, that's great. But but they're but they're, it's 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 funny because it's like either 
when you're in the the Atlantic City, it's like it's extremely black and white. Like there's no gray. Like they're super nice casinos are just like mm. scary places, you know. Well, it's either the <laughs> Borgata or everything else in Atlantic City that's not the Borgata. Correct. <laughs> Except Caesars is nice in Tropicana, so. Yeah, oh, there you go. And the shows are great down here. Great crowds. Oh, it, it, isn't uh, Trump's Taj Mahal closed? It did close, yeah. And that's where I actually used to perform down here is the yeah. Trump. Yeah, but it closed, yeah. Yeah, because I remember uh, the Taj was always big because it was in the movie Rounders. And, like, th- that really yeah. hyped it up. Except uh, I visited there once. I'm like, this place is kind of a shithole. Yeah, the, yeah, it, it was. <laughs> it, it, it was really – it's a really bizarre, weird – and we used to have comedy shows in the strip club scores. Mm. Oh, it would be like it'd be there'd be a comedy show, and then yeah. like as soon as the comedy show, like all the strippers and poles would come down. You know, like it's yeah. really interesting. Oh, it was, so <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't simultaneous because that would be hilarious. That would be really hilarious, right? Yeah. No, um, but but for the Borgata, the Tropicana, Harris, and Caesars are like mm. the nice hotels out here, and they're 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 starting to rebuild. So hopefully they keep going. Yeah. Now. I don't frequent many strip clubs, not really my, my vibe, but uh, I, I was there for a bachelor party. And speaking of things going on at the same time as strip clubs, uh, they have a – I feel like some strip clubs are trying to go with the sports bar feel. Like they're almost trying to Buffalo Wild Wings, a, a strip club. And they have a yeah. – they got a giant-ass TV, like just off to the left of the stage. And, you know, th- this main dancer, a lovely young lady, I hope she got through cosmetology school, was up there dancing. Yeah. Except uh, – um, who was it? Uh, Francisco Liriano, I think. Pitcher for the Twins is working on a no hitter. Yeah. So everyone was watching the TV. <laughs> well, this dancer is just up there. Get, yeah. Maybe that's how they could get like Thursday night football ratings up. You know, like just maybe like have Thursday night football and it's strip clubs. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I go for that. Yeah. Uh, what about the Hampton? What about the Hamptons? I feel like that's going to be a touch nicer than AC. Yeah, isn't it funny? So during the week, I go to. And I'm in the Hamptons. It, so my backstory in the Hamptons is when I first moved to the city, I became a full-time uh, nanny for a family, mm-hmm. and they have houses out in the Hamptons, and I they're like my New York family. So when I I still go stay with them in the summertime because their nanny travels a lot, so I help them out, and then I also do shows in Southampton and East Hampton, and now Montauk, mm-hmm. and they're usually like little theaters or like restaurant shows, but it's like really fun i like the more local shows than when all because manhattan moves to the hamptons in the summer mm-hmm. but i like the more local shows like people who actually live there year-round you know yeah versus the desperate housewives now do you have any um hampton themed materials like uh you know it's really great chardonnay and xanax <laughs> yeah and, and getting away oh, from our hedge, hedge fund husbands there. yep yep and the husbands only come on the weekends and then the moms have their nannies out there during the week, even though their kids are in camp all day, you know? Yeah. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I, I was like the... But the family I work... But the, wait, wait, wait. But the family I work mm-hmm. for, they're like wealthy, amazing people, and they're very down to earth, and that's why I'm so glad I'm part of their family. Not like... I've seen some pretty bad families and kids, you know? Like, I've, I, I'm blessed. Hashtag blessed. Yeah. I, I feel like um, there's not enough people named Muffy anymore. Yeah, what, what's up with yeah, that? Remember that used to be like the stereotypical, like, waspy, rich-kept uh, old white lady oh named Muffer? You you would not understand these ladies' first world problems. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, there's plenty of good material. And, yeah, two extremes, though, going from AC. Even though in AC there's, like, 10 minutes, 15 minutes outside of here, there's such beautiful, like, million-dollar beach homes that are, like, gorgeous. So, mm-hmm. You know, just a little different crowd. Now, it, with New York uh, comedians, like you said, there's a there's a comedy shop like every other block, and uh, every block. I, I just remember like Tom Papa was telling Rogan of one time he did like a dozen shows in one night, and just like went from club to mm-hmm. club and just working on material. Uh, what's the most shows that you've done in a night? Most shows I've done is six. Yeah. Um and. This is the thing. Even if you're, like, on TV, Comedy Central, you're just, like, popping in, which a lot of the comics do, Amy Schumer, mm-hmm. all, all these people, Jerry Seinfeld, uh, Godfrey, anyone, they'll pop in. And they'll let, I mean, the owners will let them go as long as they want. But yeah. what's crazy is most of us, most of us full-time, like, professional comedians, our average sets are, like, 10 minutes. Because mm-hmm. there's so much, 
so many shows and so many comedians on every show that you don't even get to like work out most of your material. So yeah. it's lucky. It's like a blessing and a curse to be a, like a New York state comedian. Yeah. No. Cause there's so much, but you don't yeah. make money in the New York comedy scene. You make mm. money. Like when we go on the road and when you're down in Atlantic city, yeah. it's so crazy. Like when I'm on the road, I do 30 minute sets and I get paid like triple because mm. <laughs> people in Kansas and Oklahoma and, anywhere else care more about comedy than New York. <laughs> What's your, uh, outside of your, your, your Bermuda triangle, uh, up there, uh, what's been your favorite stop, uh, when you've been out on the road? Atlanta. Love, love Atlanta. It's great, a, great it's strip clubs. And the comedy corner underground in Minneapolis. That was a fun place. Oh, that was my yeah. second favorite place. Yeah. Yeah. I got to do a triple feature there. It was fun. I got to meet a lot of great, um, local uh, Minnesota comedians. Mm-hmm. That was great, and I don't know that was like my second favorite show. Now, have you ever done uh, Acme when you're when you're up in the cities? N- no, but I'm planning on it in the fall. So get oh, ready. Yeah. You 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 and all the the Viking followers got to come support. Oh yeah, because you're coming in I'm for find something. Yeah, you're coming in I'm for the season. Find my husband. <laughs> Coming, I'm coming to find my husband. Actually, okay. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, then, uh, yeah, we'll have to have you on the show because you're coming in for the Monday night football game, right? Yeah, I want to come. I want to come for a stupid Adrian Peterson. All right. <laughs> yep. Uh, now, <laughs> you, you mentioned earlier that you were sad that Chris Carter ended his career on a different team. Do you have those same feelings about Adrian on the Saints? Correct. Yes. Oh, you do? Yes. I'm not, I'm, but you know what? I'm not mad at Adrian Peterson. I'm just like, really the thing. Okay, cool. I mean, I thought he should go to the Patriots for a year. I mean, he, I'm like, you want to get a ring, right? <laughs> like, what are you doing? But the Saints, they, they, they might be shaping up to do pretty okay. No, no, they're not good. Um, yeah, I, I love that. I forget who said, who said it, but it was like, yeah, Adrian Peterson had the choice of getting paid one last time or trying to win a ring. Uh, and with the Saints, he accomplished neither. Yeah, like what? Like I was like Adrian. Um, I would have took less money, gone play for Bill for a year, mm. call it a damn day. Well, they need a running back. I, I think it's zero coincidence that he signs with the Saints like uh, two days after the schedule comes out. And he's like, oh, they're playing the Vikings week one. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah. Good. I hope our defense just kills you. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's my prediction. Like, um, Adrian, I feel like time heals all wounds, pardon the pun, uh, dealing with Adrian, but yeah. I feel like a lot of Vikings fans have forgiven or didn't even have beef with them in the first place. So when it's yeah. when it's 41-3 to three Vikings, and at the end of the game, they're uh, the Saints on their backup quarterback, like Garrett Grayson and Adrian are in there, and they're on like the five, then they just give him the ball like four straight times, and he finally gets in, and then the entire U.S. Bank Stadium just shouts, a P A P A P. Yeah, it's like ah, totally. kill me. Min- that whole Minnesota nice, you know. And Minnesota passive aggressive. It's like uh, <laughs> oh my god, that's the best yeah. thing I've ever heard. Not Minnesota nice, Minnesota passive oh, aggressive. Oh, maybe this is it. Maybe the entire fan base is actually pissed at Adrian, except they never voice it. They just drop subtle hints. You know, I've been kind of over like. Let me tell you, the decade, and what a fun, what a fun running back. He'll, he'll always have a lot of great. Like I've always appreciated him. I love him. That'll be a, a good memory when I'm older. Adrian Peterson, blah blah blah. But I've been kind of over him the last couple of years. He's kind of been useless. So yeah, <laughs> well, he's a two down running back in a, in a three down modern passing league. So yeah, yeah. He, he's so, vo- we'll see. We'll yeah. see. Um, switch back to comedy, then I'll get out of your hair for the day. The uh, who's uh, something that you've come up with that has made it big? Um. Okay. Who has I come up with? Okay. So big in comedy world though. I just don't feel like a lot of people would know if you weren't, unless you're like a diehard comedy fan, mm. but um, I would like to give his name out. His name is Andrew Schultz. Mm-hmm. If you have not heard of him, I love smart comedy, um, and he makes you think. I love him. Um, he's great. He's doing really well. He's like on MTV, but he's like really known in the in the comedy world. And he has a great podcast called Brilliant Idiots. And he started Guy Code. I don't know if you ever watched this on MTV. I don't, but that's what he's like known for. Oh, but wait, uh, is, yeah, is Brilliant Idiots the one with Shadow God? Yeah. Wow, that's I awesome. Think so yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, uh, Andrew Schultz, he's great. So he's someone, um, he's one of my biggest influences, and I'm just, like, very proud of him. Mm -hmm. And then there's this girl, Yamanika Sanders. She just got her first Comedy Central special. It's coming out, like, soon. They, I think they released them all this month. Mm -hmm. She was another one. She inspired me a lot. So, yeah. Uh, I have okay. a lot of good comedians that people should listen to. <laughs> the uh, list could go on. Uh, who who is um who are the big names like uh, do you look up to? Okay, so well, Dave Chappelle, yeah, the goat. God, I love that man. Uh, he you he, know, look, he looks up to you, even though he's a tall man. Yeah, actually, we're the same height. I got to hug him. He looks great. He looks ripped. I would marry him. Um, yeah, ooh, uh, Chappelle special, and when he hosts SNL, like he he looks great. He looks ripped like ohio oh ohio country living's good except his voice yeah no he looks he looks great i mean i know black people they like work out one day and then they have abs again but yeah. he like looks amazing yeah. um actually i saw him um comedy sellers like you've made it in comedy i'm trying we're all trying to get there that's the mm. goal in new york city and just as a comedian and dave Chappelle popped in the other night he did four hours wow four four hours he went on stage for four hours and everyone stayed and it was just like a stream of consciousness, and that just like blows my mind that he could just go on stage for four hours. And that Paul Mooney used to do the same thing. I'm like, you guys blow my mind yeah. that you just like can do that. Now, are, are you someone who has to have like like the, the material set? Like you, you have your your ten minute, no. your thirty minute set? Or I used to. I used okay. to. Now I can just be thrown up. Um, yeah. I'm seasoned now, so seasoned if that's the word we use. Yeah. So I have about mm. probably like an hour worth of material, mm. and I don't. Um, I'm at a level where you can just put me up now, but I used to about a year and a half, a year ago, I used to have to be like, okay, what am I going to say? What am I going to do? Really plan it. But now I can yeah. just riff and go up there. Yeah. And see, that's my whole thing too. It's uh, like when I was watching as a kid, watching Seinfeld um, do like that little fake stand up thing before an episode. I'm like, yeah. you know, if he's up there for an hour, how does he not forget stuff? Like, how does he not have things yeah. written down on his hand? I'm like, oh, because he practices every single goddamn day. Yep. Yeah, he, Jerry's great. I'm actually going to go see him at the Beacon tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited because I've never I've, – I've, I have followed him because when he popped in at Gotham Comedy Club one time, that was great. Yeah. Um, and then he followed him uh, home. Yeah, I follow, I, yeah, I followed him home. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I like Jerry a lot. He's cool. I can't wait to see him. But, yeah, so I think as a comic – you just when you start finding your voice, you just you know you have our you have just endless material and you should be able to go up at any mm -hmm. time. Well, so. and just to bring it down into a way 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 macro level of Jerry Seinfeld, of well, like when I started doing podcasts and doing radio stuff, um, now we're like five hundred episodes in. But uh, I remember the first episode of Purple for the Win was. Uh, do you remember the Ravens snow game in twenty thirteen? The what? Uh, Ravens snow game in 2013 where Joe Flacco marched 80 yards in 45 seconds in a blizzard and Leslie Frazier got fired yeah. eventually. Yeah. It was after that. Well, thank God, Leslie Frazier. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was right after that. That was rough. Yeah. It was a 20 minute episode, was up, uh, 20 minute show was episode one. And I wrote down every single word of the show. So just like you me did? reading. Yeah. Like it, it's so cute. That's it's so, so quaint now. And, and now coming in, I, I had. Two words written down on a sheet of paper. A. Marie. <laughs> a. Marie. Yeah. You, you know what I, I uh, this is a really cool exercise I'm trying now. Like when I have my bigger shows, sometimes I plan more. Mm -hmm. Like if I'm doing like a Friday or Saturday night or I'm head featuring or headlining, I'll be more organized. I'll kind of like write a list of maybe the jokes I'll do, but it's, I usually don't follow it. But just maybe kind of have like an idea in my head. Yep. But now when I'm trying out, when I'm throughout the week, because I perform every night, mm -hmm. throughout the week, this comedian by the name of Teddy Smith, he's great. He's like a, just like, I don't know why he's not famous. He's just one of those great veteran comedians in New York City. He made me sit down the other night because I'm trying to break through my new material because I feel like I'm just, I need, I need like a new half hour. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how do you come up with these like new 30 minute sets all the time? And he made me sit down and tell my whole life story. And this is so fascinating to me. He's like, you don't talk about 90% of this on stage. I don't know why this has been like a big breakthrough for me this week, but I'm really excited where my comedy is headed now because I never thought about all this. He just like opened my eyes. Anyways, check him out. He's great. Mm. 
And he told me to go on stage unprepared because it makes it forces you to come up with new material. So I've been trying that out. Um, Working okay. That 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 is super scary though. That's like saying, "Hey, jump on this, uh, jump on this airplane, and then um, someone will come scoop you up." Like a Navy SEAL comes to you up. But it's working, though, because yeah. it forces you. I think I think when you get to a certain level, you can do it. I don't, I don't suggest mm. new comedians do this, obviously. Yeah. Just a little bit. But, you know, kind of let it flow and just be honest with yourself. All right. So uh, that's where I'm at right now. Uh, two more items, and then I'll let you go. Um, one, what's the – tell me about the time that you've bombed, like you, your worst bombing experience. I'm going to tell you, I bombed, like – I'm. I'm not saying I haven't, like, I've had, like, weak sets, but I went drunk on stage one time, and I'll never do that ever again. Yeah. That was one time, that was, like, a year and a half ago. It was, like, February 2015. Now, were, were you so drunk that you thought that you were just killing it, uh, but the crowd was, I like, I did no. it, and I just, well, no, I was just, like, slurring, like, <laughs> my punchline and stuff, and I was so embarrassed, and I was, and, and I was hosting. It was really bad. Oh. It was really bad. I see. So. Hosting's like my thing. I'm a big MC. Like I yeah. host a lot of shows. So. I, I feel like there's that right level of of buzzed where you're you're better in a social setting and even like hosting like that. But it, it's a very thin line. Like as soon as you cross it, bang. I don't drink before I perform. Once in a while, sometimes before I host, like when I'm down in AC and I'm like, I'm like exhausted. Like I might have like a, like a drink before I go on stage just to like wake me up. But like mm. I do not drink until like after the show <laughs> and then you make up that, for lost time key. yeah exactly <laughs> an hour and a half all right uh and last but not least what, what's the end game like um the whole cliched where you see yourself in five years like what, what would make you happy in your career um i want to become a sports personality mm. and then tour the country um doing stand-up all over the country like i just want to be i want to be a road comic i just want to tour i want to talk about sports during the day and then i want to perform at night that's all oh. I want to do. Oh, so your perfect gig would be like uh, I'm part of the interruption when Will Bond's always on the road or on vacation, and then they do the split screen. Yeah, totally. Gotcha. Totally, totally. Yeah, I would love to. Um, I love radio too. So, but mm-hmm. I would love to become like a TV sports personality. Oh, I can catch Will. That's all I want to do. But oh. I want to bring comedy into it, and that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to do it. Well, I, I it's think... hard being a female in sports, though, man. It's hard. I feel like it's getting easier, though. I feel like um, now it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. It, it's there's never never been a better time to be a female or minority in uh, in sports media or media in general. That, that's why you and me we're rising. Totally. We're rising to the top, baby. And and I get told a lot after I do segments and podcasts. I find this so fascinating. Like, you know, a lot of people have podcasts, and a lot of comics will be like, "Hey, you want to be on my sports podcast?" <laughs> And then after, they'll be like, wow, you actually know stuff about sports. I'm like, what? You just, like, had me on, and you're like, what do you think I was going to do? Like, what? No, that, that's, a, that's uh, a little messed up. That's like, I know, but it happens all the time. That's like the greatest backhand. Like, uh, that's a Venus Williams-level backhand in, in terms of compliment. And this is the thing with guys. Like, they try to out outdo me in sports. I'm like, mm. I'm just passionate. And I was like, and I'm not that kind of person. Like, if I don't know something, like... If you name an athlete and I don't know, I'll be like, just, I want to just tell me. Like, I'll admit it. Like, I'm not trying to, like, prove anything. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I just love sports, okay? Yeah. Let me live. Yeah. Oh, you're not like uh, that, that girl who, who really wants to hang with the guys and is like, I'll go shot for shot with you guys. Actually, maybe you are that girl. But I am that girl, <laughs> but I'm not trying to be that girl. I yeah. am that girl. That's how the part-time bro came up. I'm like a guy's girl, you know? Like, mm-hmm. I, I always have been, like, since I was a little girl. And... Yeah, I don't know. So I've always been, you know, I'm always the only girl in fantasy football. I'm always mm. the only girl out with all the guys. You know, I'm the one that the wives and girlfriends blame. They're like, who's this chick? And everything gets blamed on me, you know? Yeah. But well, we all anyway. have her across the bear. Yeah. Uh, she's A. Marie. Follow her on Twitter at part underscore time underscore bro. Uh, sports bro. Rose. Yeah. Uh, like everything's Two coming minute up. warning. They're called two minute warning. Two minute warning sports rose. And stay in your lane. My first comedy special will be released June 12th. I will send out the link and all that jazz. Do that up. And uh, w- I'm sure that this is not the last time that our paths will cross. And I look forward to I hope not. I'm coming on the show. It's I know. You're coming November. on the show when you're here. I'm live. Hit. Come to all 512 of me. <laughs> oh, ooh, you're, you're six foot? <laughs> yeah. See, I, I feel like this would be great because 
we should do a show together. And since I'm like five eight on a good day, and I, I will oh, at least you admit it. I, I know. Guys lie about that. I know. Especially and... online. Especially online. <laughs> uh, if you're six four, don't even talk to me, bro. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, our kids are gonna make uh, JV. I need someone taller. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. All right, don't be a stranger, bud. I won't. Thank you so much. I was, I'm really glad that I finally got to be on your show, and I, I'll see you in September. Yep. Ooh, wait, wait, hold on. This is uh, recording on Wednesday. This airs on Thursday. Who wins Game Three tonight? The Cavs. By how many? Uh, it's gonna be a really close game. I just need the Cavs. <laughs> no, I think we'll be home. I think it's gonna be like last year. I don't think it's going to be exactly like last year because Kevin Durant does look good, but mm. um, we just need to get it together, man. Uh, let's, I'm going to say Cavs by six. No, the NBA needs this thing to go seven, so it's going to be Cavs by 30, and LeBron's going to go to the line about 80 times. You think so? It's the NBA. I know. I just like <laughs> – no, it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a close game. All right, book, book that up. This is going to be hilarious to listen tomorrow after the Warriors win by 50. All right, all right, all right, cool. Okay, all right, all right. It's not going to be by 30, but the Cavs are going to win tonight. The all Cavs right. definitely are going to win tonight. Right. And great stuff from, from A. Marie. I, um, I always really respect stand-up comedians, and they, they come from all walks of life. Like, you see male comedians, female comedians, black, white, rich, poor, everything, and the it, it's not a nurture thing i get i think it's definitely a a nature thing where you're either born with it or you're not and i I was you know i like to consider myself slightly above average in the humor department i don't know if i could do stand-up i i really do not like that public speaking it's fine i can do that but public speaking and trying to be funny (sighs) be a little tough who knows? But I uh, look forward to uh, Amory when she's in town. Have her on the show uh, face-to-face. Hopefully I don't get too drunk because uh, she, she she seems to go hard. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, also, something you should go hard on this summer is Pedal Pub Twin Cities. Get out there. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Downtown Minneapolis, St. Paul, Uptown, Town, whatever town. Uh, they got routes all over the Twin Cities. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Birthday parties, bachelorette parties, it's a great, great time. And it's a good way to get out, get some mild cardio, have a couple of beverage while they do the driving and stop in. A couple of Twin Cities, great, great bars, watering holes, and eateries. Hit it up. Pedalpub.com, pedalpub.com. And if you do the Sunday Fun Day, like we're doing for my birthday here in a couple of weeks, Sunday Fun Day, you get 90 bucks off your order. That's a big time savings. Pedalpub.com. Check it out. All right. If you want to support the show, uh, just spread the word. Uh, tell a friend. Uh, turn them on to Bull with Andy Carlson or Purple for the Win or you know, whatever the hell we're doing out here. Yeah. iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, all at Andy Carlson Show. And ooh, like the Purple for the Win YouTube channel. Uh, Purple. Uh, yeah, yeah. Because it, it's blowing up. Like we're doing daily ish videos on there and it's a lot of fun. Definitely recommend that, and we'll talk to you Friday. Uh, but uh, thanks, producer Allie, for making me not sound so stupid today, except for right there. Where were you, Allie? Uh, but for A. Marie, I'm Andy Carlson saying Annyeong, Sayonara, and bye bye. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Listening to Bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. Download the show on iTunes. Everyone's middle name is Jerome. Andy Carlson here, Purple for the Win Podcast, letting you know that we'll be here all off-season long talking the Vikings angle on everything. Combine, pro days, free agency, the draft, OTAs, training camp in 2017, baby. Get the show on 1500 ESPN Podcast One and the Podcast One app.